doing guys, Stephen, James Glenn Car Sales. I know you're desperate to find out what the D3S is like to drive, but first, before we jump in to that beautiful Alpina Green Tourer, we just need to take a quick couple of minutes, a five, quick five minutes, and just revisit the absolutely epic car that the D3S is based on, and that is this. This is BMW's M340D. I have reviewed this car previously on the channel because it is our car, mine and Julie's, but when I reviewed it back then, it was on its winter tyres, and when you're trying to, you know, demonstrate how a car handles, when you're, you know, giving it a bit of a send, the winter tyres don't allow the car, certainly the chassis, to, to shine to its full potential. Um, we're going to put both the cars for the, for the, for the, for the test, we're going to put both cars in adaptive, which I have found over the course of the last five, six thousand miles running this car is basically the setting for all. Yes, you can put in comfort. Yes, it will be a bit more wafty. And yes, you can put in a sport and it will make the car a bit stiffer. But for every single situation that I found myself in, adaptive seems to be just exactly where you want it. Now, um, the <laughs> I have wanted an Alpina for 10 years possibly, possibly longer, and we were lucky enough um, to have the opportunity to buy a beautiful Alpina Green D3S Touring. It's the same age as this, it's the same mileage as this. I mean, the two cars really could not be any better matched for a head-to-head for -head, um, review. And I'm trying my very best to remain um, as uh, is it subjective, objective, whatever the I'm trying to I'm trying to keep my I'm trying to let my decision not be ruled by my heart and also be ruled by how the Alpina looks because it's a shitload of money extra and it's got to do more than just look the part. It's got to drive the part as well. So we're on to the Alpina just shortly guys, so we're back in the M340D, um, let's see how she is on the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. I mean, the ride and adaptive is just, it's phenomenal, uh, it, it seems to breathe with the road, it's not too stiff, um, it's not too wallowy, which I can sometimes find when you leave the car in comfort, um, it's just a real nice, perfect balance. Um, but but the, the Alpine has also got a couple of extra additional um, modes which we will have a look at when we get in uh, when we get into it. So I'm just going to build about um, and then we'll give a wee blast to the bank. Because this was really just to, re I mean I drive this car often but not with the old reviewing head on. Um, and when you do that you're obviously much more aware of how the car's feeling underneath you and, and what it's like throttle response wise and all the rest of it. It is worth pointing out, this is a MHT car, so um, just factor that in, uh, that seems to give it a really, almost, you know, there's like no lag, there's no delay when you accelerate, in this car you accelerate, and it's just immediate, so let's go. If there's uh, noise from the back, that'll be Julie's hairdressing stuff. for any, any performance whatsoever. Um, the Alpine is on a 20 inch wheel, this is on a 19 inch wheel, this is also on a Michelin tyre and the previous owner has put a Pirelli on the, on the Alpina and I think that's going to, I, I think that's going to hurt how the car drives on our less than perfect roads. Um, because this car on the 19 inch wheel on a Michelin Pilot and adaptive is just sublime. It is absolutely perfect. You don't feel any jam coming up through the steering column. If you happen to find yourself going over some rough terrain, uh, not rough terrain, but you know, rough tarmac of which we have plenty. Um, so yeah, I mean, there is very little negative 
points, the very few, the fact I can't even think of any to be honest. When I first reviewed this car, I felt that I had a bit of, a bit of, a bit of mass to it compared to the old F30 model. Um, that's just something you get used to. And then once you get used to the, 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 the dimensions of it, you just start to fall in love with it again. I mean, it really is just, it's just epic. Paddles have got a nice weight to them. Um, the brakes are mega. It's just so quick. Make a great noise, the six cylinder, twin turbo diesel, 350 brake horsepower. It's, what, it's also worth mentioning, the DT doesn't, doesn't have any extra power. So that's another thing that you're thinking, all this extra money you spend, and it doesn't even have like five horsepower more. Uh, we've got an old D3 um, in the garage, an E90 D3, and it had the 123 diesel engine put in it, uh, and the, the pre-LCI, I Alpina put a bigger turbo on it. You know, there was always some sort of mechanical magic that Alpina decided to do to make it stand out from the base model that it was built on and the DTS mechanically from as far as the engine and the drivetrain goes is unchanged. I mean it's not a bad thing but it's not as I say it's not like we, we need any more power but when you're shelling out all that extra money it would be nice if it had just a little bit more. So anyway the Alpina is sitting waiting and uh, we'll just get the camera swapped over and we'll, we'll see what the are like back to back. So, uh, continuity score, 0 out of 10. However, we are still in the Alpina, just on a different day. When I first started looking into the D3S, I didn't think there was that many differences. And when you first move off in the car, essentially it does feel quite, it does feel very similar. In fact, you really need to be quite a keen driver, in my humble opinion, to really notice the differences in how the car drives on initial impressions. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've got all the lovely alpininess going on on the inside. We've got the wee emblems in the seat. We've got the nice blue stitching and the fancy uh, graphics on the on the, the live operating TFT display thing above. And we've got our wee plaque and stuff. But see, for all the extra money, I want more than baubles. There's got to be more than just a, a light garnishing of Alpina tinsel uh, to justify the rather hefty uplift in price, which. You're going to be looking at something along the lines of fifteen to twenty thousand pounds extra for a comparable H D three S over an M three forty diesel. So what do you get? You get the same engine, you get the same drivetrain, um, pretty much the same interior, but just with, as I mentioned, with, with some light Alpina garnishings sprinkled over. But then when you start reading a bit further into it you find out that it's got an improved cooling system. It's got a larger displacement intercooler. The brake horsepower is up, just 15 brake horsepower, but the torque's up 28 foot-pounds of torque as well. This one doesn't have mild hybrid technology either, so that, I, I felt you would lose a wee bit of throttle response, but if anything, this car feels like it pulls that little bit harder, especially up at the top end. What else have I noticed? that the ride, where you would think, would be worse because you're on a big massive 20-inch tyre with an Alpina-specific Pirelli tyre, or being a bit more of a Michelin man myself, you'd expect the ride to be worse, but it isn't. The turning also seems to be a little bit keener as well, but that is not just down to the fact that it's got high-back springs, high-back bump stops, and also a, a reprogrammed damping system which gives it an additional level of comfort called Comfort Plus, but also because they've dialed in an extra degree of a negative camber in the front. And if anybody knows anything about setting a car up for a track day, what negative camber on the front, and this car's got it. So it's a rather interesting Alpina ingredients that has been added to an already fantastic car. And what do you get when you start driving it? Well, you get a car that no matter what road you send it down, uh, anyone ever driven the road from Braemar to Blair Gowrie, the A93, even down that road, at full send, this car never felt the slightest bit floaty, never felt that there was any 
understeer whatsoever. And even in the lumpy sections of that road, with these big massive wheels on it, did it ever feel like the suspension was beginning to run out of wheel control? It is absolutely sublime. The M340 diesel does not need any more pace. If anything, it feels like it could run ever so slightly smoother. And honestly guys, I'm really, I wouldn't quite say we're splitting hairs here, but it's very, very difficult to improve a car that has already forged such a phenomenal reputation as the M340 diesel. So we've got some nice hardware upgrades. Let's move on to the visual stuff. And that beautiful front apron, which has been, as far as I'm concerned, it's been Alpina's hallmark, kind of a trademark styling cue that we've, that we've all grown to know and love. It's got this bizarre little front apron and a front spoiler uh, at the leading edge of the roof, um, which we can only imagine is down to increased stability, which the standard BMW variant doesn't need, as they are limited to 155 miles an hour. These cars do not have a limiter, and in fact, it's got a 210 mile per hour speedo, which, whilst optimistic, gives you a wee indication that she'll do a fair bit more than the, uh, the 155. We've got the four exhaust outlets at the back, which, unfortunately, when you peek inside, are fake, but that's the world in which we live now. It's got enormous, and I mean enormous, front brake discs. Not measured them, but I believe that they're going to be somewhere in the region of about 400, 390, 400 mil. Put it this way, even behind a 20 inch wheel, they still look absolutely huge. It just, it just screams class and exclusivity from every single angle on the outside. And then when you get inside, you've got as I mentioned, all the lovely little things just to remind you that you're in something that little bit more special. So I have now got myself out into the National Speed Limit Road and um, let's see how it compares with the 340. And I mentioned guys we're in a, a, a horrible day. Four wheel drive. Makes a short work of that overtake here in the rain. The faster you go, the smoother and the smaller this car feels. The weight is two tons and it certainly doesn't feel it from where I'm sitting. It just steamrolls over all the little imperfections in the road and then when you turn in there is literally no weight transfer, there's no lean. But you would expect for a car to have no lean for it to then be brick stiff. But that is just how Alpinas seem to be set up to give you a faster car that rides better. And that is where the, where the real magic happens. They look beautiful, obviously, but it's how these things drive, especially on a, on a UK B road. So I'm just going to build about to behind about Mori and then we'll give it a wee blast and we back. Alright guys, D3 fly out. Absolutely devastating. It's hard to believe that they're a diesel, they really are. So I think, yes, that will do is given the conditions. It almost feels like we shouldn't be doing it and then I should be thrashing about in an Alpine. I should drive a bit more stately and a bit more, a bit more calm, a bit more grown up. That being said, it does, it's the sort of car that you don't feel the need utilise all the performance to get your money's worth out of it. It's just a lovely, lovely thing to be in. Right guys, so we've got a wee bit of clear road now. Um, we'll get it down into second gear and uh, we'll give it a wee, a wee send. Does it feel that, that much quicker than the M340 diesel? Not really. It, it really, it really doesn't. Um, I mean, you're not going to feel such a small difference in horsepower. Um, between the two cars, I mean, and even side by side, they would probably struggle um, to pull from one another, for this to pull from the, from the 340. It's the, the full package is where it all starts to make sense. The way it rides, the way it looks. And I know that this is a placebo thing, but it's the way the car makes you feel when you're, when you're sitting inside it. The steering wheel just feels 
is that little bit thicker and the, the leather's made from a slightly different material and you've got this dark ash green trim, you've got the little plaque there, the Alpina on the top of the dials and I know that it's all small things but when you combine that with how it looks, how it rides and the fact that you will never pass another one when you're out in it on the road it's just magical it really is and I absolutely love it if you find yourself in a M340 diesel you're never going to be disappointed you really are but see if you really 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 want an Alpina and you do push yourself and you spend the extra money to buy one you're not going to regret that either they're both great cars in their own right but the Alpina stays where it is and that is on top it's extra money we know it's extra money but you do get extra car for it it's just down to whether or not you can justify it to yourself that the extra money that you're paying is, that is something that you're going to see the value in speaking of values at the end the Alpina should hold its money a little bit will hold its money better as well and not if that's a definite you just need to look at older Alpinas uh, to see that so add the man maths uh, apply the man maths and get one if you really really want one because you won't regret it they are absolutely magical things just be prepared for random conversations at petrol stations uh, unfortunately that goes with the package guys uh, thank you very much for the video thanks very much for watching the video hope you made it to the end and um, hope you took something away from it uh, as it turns out I have taken something away from it I've taken this car that's how much I like it and it's been well and truly worth the wait guys I'll see you in the next video any questions leave it in the comments thanks bye bye